What's up Miniatures Paintbrush Legion? This is Rob, your host, and today we're going to talk about building urban bases. Right, so I painted up an urban terrain base. Pictures are going to come out later on in the video. And I did this for the channel uh, Gamecraft Dragon. And the reason why I did that was because they were the winners of one of my base challenges when I made a base with rolling pins. And I'll link that one up here so you can see that. And then... Um, what you got here is an urban terrain base. You see, um, Big D from Gamecraft Dragon couldn't use the fantasy base in which I made. So I told him, hey, why don't you just give it to your wife and I'll make you a regular base for your army. And he's like, yeah, I want something urban. I'm like, okay, I can do urban, no problem. Um, Life kind of got in the way, it was a couple of challenges, and a lot of things were going on. Finally, I had the chance to actually build that base that he was looking for, uh, for his uh, champion. And I almost dropped it. <laughs> and for his champion. And um, I think it came out really well. So, Game Big D from Gamecraft Dragon, I'm going to send this your way. But right now, let me show you how I did the base, so you can recreate a similar base for your army. Alrighty, so we're gonna start off with this project and I always try to like gather as many materials as possible to put onto a base. So I'll go into a lot of different bins and just pull out stuff and just throw them on my desk and, and hopefully some inspiration comes to mind. Alright, so now that I settle for an idea and I do a sketch of uh, what it's going to be, uh, I took this remaining piece that I had from a terrain bit that I built and I, I, I didn't like the floor there, so I kind of took it out. Um, I saved it for some kind of purpose. I didn't know what exactly. Yes, I'm encouraging hoarding at this point when it comes to a lot of bits. So I drew a line of the base where I wanted to cut it out. And I got my really heavy clippers in order to uh, take this out because you can see this is quite thick it's from a terrain piece i think it's from second edition um where it came with the entire set and that's where i got my um that's where i got the piece from since i built terrain and i, I cut this piece off so next up what i want to do is i want to smooth out the edges so this way it'd be well, about the roundness of the uh, 40 millimeter base that i have there and uh i do i mean you do want to get a little um, accurate with how round it is, but I wouldn't sweat it too, too much, only because, um, you know, giving it that little bit of edge uh, makes it look more like a concrete slab uh, than being perfectly round. Although, if you want to go to town with this sucker and get the circumference perfect, then you can. I just think it adds more character when it's like that. All right, so next up I have this extra bit, and I actually don't know where it came from, but it was like this big empty hole there, so I gotta put wood filler in there. That's right, wood filler. Wood filler has great texture to it, so it looks like you know someone concreted it in uh, and did a hasty job in doing so. I love that kind of look to it because this is war torn, so you know there's gonna be a lot of patches and stuff like that. And then I'm getting a clay shaper, and that's what that tool is, uh, just so I can smooth it out now I do want to leave it uh, you know beveled outwards uh, simply because I know there's going to be some drying and in the drying effect it's going to recess so I just want to put that extra bit on there and just try to bevel it out and there you go um, all right, so time to glue this onto the base because I want to have cohesiveness when I paint it. Uh, and it's going to be just a backdrop right there. Considered a lot of things for this. I actually built a concrete wall out of uh, cork board, but then I decided that the cork board was just too thick. I do want to do a lot of things to this base, and I don't have a lot of space in order to do it with now the one thing about this base that I have to mention is that I don't know where the footfalls of the model that um, 
Big D is actually going to put on this where it's going to be. So I just, you know, try to be as minimal as possible when taking up space inside this base. Um, but I do want to put as much po stuff as possible onto the base. Okay, so this is a Necromunda terrain. And I wanted to separate the lever that's on the side of this console uh, from the base. And I should have gotten a jeweler saw. I know I have one around here. But have you ever gotten impatient? and just wanted to do it your way I decided ultimately I'm gonna break these apart completely and I'm gonna like make it shorter so this way it looks like it's been broken and just makeshift put together uh, the lever to the um, to the actual console and you can see I broke the handle part while doing all this hot mess right here but it's not anything that I can't fix again mistakes are happy little accidents and you know we just build upon what we got here now I'm just gonna try to get to um, where I want things and kind of like plan out where exactly I want uh, the console and how it's gonna face and everything else. This is important because I do wanna put a wire in order to uh, connect both of these things. So I have, enough, I have to have enough space in order to do that with. All right, these pieces I actually got from a class that I taught on edge highlighting, and that's why you see those white highlighted edges from the black there. Uh, black to white highlighted edges is about one of the hardest things to do, so I wanted to teach that. Now I put a little glue here, and this is important here, that I kind of spread out the glue when it bubbles on like that. Um, that makes for a good time when it dries, and then you don't have to si sanding down is minimal. All right, now I got like this 10 gauge kind of wire, which I split apart. And I love these wires because, you know, this copper inset in, in them, and that means they're poseable. So I'm going to clip this up with my wire clippers, and it's going to fire out of there. And then I get it, and then I'm going to twist it over so this way I can connect both pieces onto it. Now, what I do end up doing is getting this like jeweler's crimpers. I love these things. You can get them at craft stores and stuff like that, where the jewelry section is. And it really does a great job at uh, bending these wires uh, however I want to and manipulate them uh, so it really looks like it's the, the wires kind of just like laying down like this um, really great stuff now you can paint this wire if you want to but I kinda just like that I don't know I just I like the way it was looking so I kind of like left it um, out of the mix when I prime this base now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you know sausage cut this out and I'm gonna put that on so I can fit on exactly where I want the wire to go um, from the console to the actual lever uh, onto the side there. Um, and it's really important that you get exactly the placement of it, not just because of the aesthetic value of it, but where to put poster putty onto the actual base. And what I'm going to do is I'm just shape up the poster putty that I'm going to put over here. And the reason why I do that is that when you do glue it on after you finish painting it, you kind of want a plastic on plastic connection. So you put the poster putty over there. So this way you can actually have that plastic on plastic connection. And then I'm going to infamously put them onto a pill bottle. And I do like to flatten out the edges of the poster putty because if it creeps up on the model you're going to have an area on the bottom where it's unpainted and that's going to be unsightly so what I then do is just like with the flat of the exacto blade I'm just like pushing it down so you can get to see how I do it with that and I'm going to do it again right here I just put a lot of poster tidy and put this on so this way the base is ready to go all right so next up I'm going to put some uh Elmer's glue all I do like glue all not school glue um it's just thicker that way and I'm just going to put it on the edges there I'm just going to create a little bit of rubble on the edges because it seems like the transition is a bit too stark there I'm going to get like the fine granules uh and this is I actually cut that from the end of my driveway uh these rocks here uh just wrote way gravel and stuff like that and free as free can be and it does such a good job at basing love the extra different textures and uh different sizes of granules so i'm gonna get like crumbled out granules and just put it on the edge there okay time to paint her up some steinal res primer i do like steinal res primer because it's self-leveling um i know they say don't thin it out but i thin it out just a little bit with water 
and I'm just going to prime it all up and it's ready to go. Okay, a neutral yellow primer, Steinol Resin. I'm going to do a Xenothal highlighting with sort of a Xenothal. I'm coming in and deciding that the light is coming in from the right end of this piece. So I decided which direction the light is going to come from. And I want to come in from the right. That means I'm highlighting all from the right and into an angle and keeping that in mind. Now, it's not like I leave a stark transition on the shadow side. I, I painted a little bit. But these colors are translucent, so you can actually go up and just sort of paint it and it looks sort of gray in the shadow. That's perfect for what we actually need here. All right, I'm going to do the exact same thing, deciding where the light is coming from. And I'm going to do it to the wall section and the rest of the base as well, using the exact same primer, just to have the consistency throughout the miniature, throughout the um, base itself. Yeah, you want to have consistency. It reads a story. Somber gray now. Uh, just going to hit just the edges of the shadows just to bring that cool blue shadow. And we got to have a lot of warm colors going in there. So I want to have that cool to warm effect, like cool being in the shadows and the warm being the sun. Uh, so just keeping that in mind, I'm just going to have that there. Heavy blue gray is next just to reinforce that gray. Um, and it's really good uh, because you don't want it to leave it, you know, yellow in the edges. Uh, but you do want to have that gray gradient right two different kinds of grays coming through so i'm just going to hit where the light is hitting and where the light is catching uh wh where the other coat is that yellow and it's just really gonna start playing in like if it's a different color shaded uh stone some people just like do stone and just like paint stone one color gray this is so boring this way it has like a lot of interest to it you know you see the shadows um all right so Avalanche sunset let's get this nice and yellow all right i decided to go for this i want it to be a popping yellow like a really strong yellow so i'm going to start with a base of Averline sunset just a little quick all over and i do love yellow because it is translucent and not opaque that means the highest highlights are going to get two to three passes uh with the airbrush before continuing on from this stage all right flash glitz yellow this is a really super bright yellow and i'm just going to hit it on the light catches like the highlights of the uh of the actual panel so just going into there uh and hitting it not all around really just all on the highest highlights and just to bring that yellow up leaving the Avalon sunset in the shadows Seraphon Seppi is next. Now I'm going to go into the shadows. I'm going to make a warm brown shadow for the actual yellow color. Um, I, I did the blue shadow for the stone, but I want to do a brown shadow for the yellow color. It's just a really great mix. And there's a lot of different ways in which you could paint yellow. Some people undercoat it with pink. Some people undercoat it with brown. Some people undercoat it. With, there's so many undercoats uh, that you can do when it comes to yellow. But I do like using Citadel shades through an airbrush just to have that slow transition. People say oh don't use that there's no point to it i love the gradient that it actually adds and i encourage it so this is what i'm doing i'm gonna have a gradient in the shadows and just really bring up the upper right hand corner with that flash glitch yellow still shining through and just while i'm adding the shadow uh that's really adding the contrast there all right, so next up, some Agrax Earth Shade. I just want to have a little bit of brown tones onto the floor where it just got a little bit dirty. Uh, and I'm going to add that to the rubble scene. Again, I do like using Citadel Shades and... Um, actually diluted it with a little bit of water. Uh, this way I can do several coats and have ultimate control of how much goes on there, how much I tint it, because that's what we're doing, just tinting it through a lens, tinting it through a lens. Um, yeah, just adding the brown lightly, slowly bring it up. And when you do it like this, it just adds so much forgiveness to when you're airbrushing. And trust me, when you airbrush, you want to add some forgiveness to your painting because you never know how many accidents you have. This way, if you're having an accident or two, it really doesn't matter because you can. it's so light that it's not even going to make a difference. It's the fifth, the sixth pass that you go through it that's really going to make the difference here. And once then, you have the muscle memory of where the paint is actually going to go. So it becomes easier to airbrush that way okay white valero uh, acrylic artist ink really important uh color here because it's like the only white that's not going to go kind of chalky on you so i'm using as a base color yes a base color 
white going straight white with this and so far that i've been trying this new product it's actually been amazing and then i'm not sponsored by vallejo and oh my gosh would i if i would lose it if i was um but it's an amazing color and you should try it out time for a red micron pen i want to do game craft dragon their uh g c d logo onto the panel itself and so i went to a micron pen to do this i can do this with a with a brush but i just like to control all the micron pen actually has right there okay again base coating with the white Vallejo Carlos acrylic ink and I'm really trying to put it through its paces here uh, I really want to see what I can do with it so I'm just like playing with the paint here and playing with this white I've notoriously hated uh, painting with white but so far with this ink it's been absolutely a dream uh, I still have to put it through a lot of different tests to see if it'll chalk up on me but so far I have not gotten any chalk with this uh, Vallejo acrylic artist ink uh, you can only get it through Dick Blick, and that is a uh, art supply store. Uh, you can't get it through Amazon, so no affiliate links or anything like that. But I might put it onto the description, so if you're interested in getting it, you'll have it there. All right, back with that Micron Red pen, and I want to do a little bit of flames underneath the Graham, Graham Craft Dragon uh, logo right there, just to <laughs> just to vary it up and have some like funky stuff going on in there i'm gonna add like a shadow to the gamecraft dragon to make it more um pronounced as well so yeah just playing with paint I and mean, worst comes to worst if i mess up i could always paint over it and try again so but i just want to make it more pronounced uh right there with the flames i think it looks kind of cool now it could be flames or just a whole bunch of blood coming through whatever you want to uh, you know associate with what that is uh but yeah i just want to like really bring it out and make it pop because uh because i like to to make it like you know i like to have variants when it comes to whenever i write like really pop okay sign for vallejo color steel uh and i'm gonna just put some steel in there uh normally i'd come back with a lighter color just to hit the highlights of the steel itself it was a relatively quick build uh, i did it in one uh sitting really i had to go on a date with my wife so i had to take a break um uh, but I, I did this all in one one sitting and just recorded it really quick and popped it out when it comes to uh bases i don't know for some reason i just fly right through them um because i'm not really worried as much i guess my own anxiety slows me down as a painter and if i did wasn't so anxious when it comes to making mistakes sometimes then i would paint so much freely and i'd have so much more um i guess fun and control at the same time it sounds weird right i'm more in control when i let go of control because now i'm liberated and i could actually just put the paint where i want to and not have to worry about oh am i gonna mess up or something like that your doubt as a painter is going to crush you get rid of it uh i'm in the process of doing that as well okay time for war colors red two and red five i mean, there's no real way to look at war colors and say anything but number two and number five because literally that is their name uh, but you can actually i wanted to show you the bottle so you can see their consistency there and what i'm going to do is going to do some wet blending here and wet blending takes some time for me so i'm going to mix both of those colors up uh, i'm going to try to draw from the darker side of it uh just so i can have the base tone and i'm going to try to have a little gradient going on in there uh on that panel there so on those two little panels again keeping like a red to a yellow consistency like that uh warmness getting that warm fuzzy all over <laughs> that's what i was going for here and um i do speed up the camera i do speed up the camera like 400 percent when i usually do these videos this way you're not watching paint dry um but at the same time i want to show you the technique uh that i actually used for this um i draw back from the lighter color on my uh little palette there which is actually the uh newspaper that i set down uh I just I just throw colors on my on my desk I like literally throw it right on my desk and just go for it I like I have no patience for paint I'm like no no I gotta throw it down whatever didn't have my pet wet palette handy that's fine I'll just work really really quickly onto a dry palette let's make it happen let's <laughs> yeah you see when it comes to basing and stuff like that I'm like just like I don't know just like not as pensive I suppose um 
I think that uh, the transition came out right. Uh, I think if I had to do it again, I think I would like put a little white boop on it, or maybe not. Maybe not do a gem effect on it. I kind of like it, uh, the transition here. And again, you go back and forth with the lighter color. You just dot it in there, and then you dot in the darker color, and just try to blend both of the surfaces uh, while the paint is wet. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, you work against time here, so you got to work a little bit quicker. But this is a um, gel medium based paint if you haven't heard of war colors um very similar to scale 75 which is also a gel medium based paint uh, where you know it just really lends to wet blending you kind of just like put the paint on the miniature and then put another paint in there and blend it straight on the miniature um only because of that thick um gel consistency it makes it makes wet blending easier not the easiest easiest would be oil colors which um you can start wet blending let it dry overnight come back the next day reactivate it and keep wet blending and you could do that for sometimes in some of the cases you can continuously do that for like 72 hours i've, I've seen very very thick uh, oil based paints um and i i definitely seen that um the oil base it just takes so longer to dry, which is a dream for wet blending. Okay, going back with the steel, because it's also on my desk, literally, put the paint on the desk. Uh, <laughs> I put a newspaper down, so I, I don't care, you know, if uh, the desk gets all messed up. <laughs> all right, time for another Micron pen, but this is a black Micron pen. Uh, and I'm just going straight through with it, just putting uh, latches with uh, that. And I was just, you know, candy striping it, I guess. That's what you call it. I don't know what you call it, like barber striping it. Uh, but then I looked at it and I said, you know what, that's a lot, a lot of striping there. So um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint one of them black and then the other one's going to be striped. So I didn't know which one is going to be uh, black and the other one's going to be striped. So I figured I'll just like, you know, practice and start painting and... Um, the one that came out the best, I'm going to leave it. And the one that came out the worst, I'm going to change it into a solid black. And um, I'm just going through it. And I, I did that side there. And then I did this side here. And that's when I noticed. I was like, yeah, I kind of like didn't like the way those stripes are going. So I said, yep, nope, I'm not going there. I am going to paint the whole thing black. And that's about it. <laughs> so I make my decisions on the fly. You see what I'm saying? When it comes to no no restrictions or happy little accidents, you could just literally just change it up midstream. And um, as long as you don't cross the streams, you're okay. Yes, Ghostbuster reference. Um, original anyway. Let's see. Yeah, no, so I really like the black and yellow uh, contrast only because, you know, Wiz Khalifa came out with that song. Um, but yeah, no, Latin Kings. <laughs> there's the one non-oil uh is going to be in the recess and i'm just trying to paint with it just filling up those recesses panel lining i guess you could say uh with the non-oil and there it is those vents look pretty good with the non-oil i like it so so far it's starting to really pop uh, i like that i'm gonna put some non-oil in the recesses here just to reinforce the shadows uh as well all right yep I'm looking good and you always want to you know that non-oil does a great job of uh just getting into the darkness uh areas and staining all right so bone white is going to go over the pure white that i actually had there um for the skull i kind of want to just change it up and uh put some bone white so we could differentiate from the panel that says uh, gamecraft dragon on the back with that logo just want to just vary it up just a little bit all right, so time to put this wire back in, back to building this base. All right, now we put the glue in there and just lining it over there. And I take my uh, my hobby tweezers, which are angled. I like the angled hobby tweezers. Guys, get yourself, uh, or girls, get yourself a couple of tweezers, uh, not just the straight ones, but angled ones and hobby ones. And, you know, it's just so worth it when you have that much more control over the small little bits that you're going to put on and not drop them or anything like that. I mean, it's just for me, it's a worthy investment. All right. So now I'm just going to put them on uh, where I masked off before with the poster putty. And so this way I can make a secure connection, plastic on plastic connection uh, for both of these. And yeah, that's how you can secure your miniatures onto the base and make sure that they don't pop off later on. So there you go. 
All right, I'm going to do some additional tattooing on the back, uh, Gramecraft Dragon. And you see in the background there, I did do a printout of a lot of different posters. Um, and you get that from Regimental Standard from the actual GW website. And now I tore this like target practice uh, of an org orc, uh, ogre, I don't know, orc uh, army. And, um, and I just tore it up and I just put it in there with some uh, Elmer's glue all and some water and just like put it in there. And I really adds some cool definition to it. I'm gonna do the same with some of the bits that I put over here for the same uh, cutout of the target. And I'm just gonna like put it into the recesses with a lot of water. It's like sort of working like paper mache kind of thing. Uh, pretty cool. It does add a lot of definition. Uh, going into a Q-tip to make sure I get the excess off and it doesn't get all over the place. But it looks really great. Um, Really do like the final product. Uh, I'm going to go back with the Micron Red and I'm just going to put like some cool design. Like somebody tagged this up on the back of this wall and they didn't know what the heck they were doing. <laughs> so I'm just going to put in like a little design in there. Maybe just like bleed off some paint in just a bit. I'm going to put Gamecraft Dragon over here too. Uh, just because. And, and the paint like bled a little bit. Yeah, just having some fun. Okay, this is uh, the best part of painting a mini, just doing the base. Now, you do want Zandri Dust to be the bottom of this, so I just painted that neutral base yellow color for the base itself. Uh, so this way, you know, uh, he can always put the Zandri Dust over it since Zandri Dust is like, you know, translucent. Uh, so next up, I did take some jewelry crimping. Um, and I love that. I go to the jewelry store, uh, jewelry uh, department of the crafting store all the time. So I just take these uh, things and it looks like it looks like shell casings for bolter pistols. I love the effect that you have uh, with this. Um, so I just threw them down again. I could have painted it, but I just really like the way they look the way au natural here. Um, <laughs> just like the perfect color. Yeah. Bolters. Um, yeah, so try that out too. Uh, I, I think I got that AC more, which is closing in my area. Very sad. All right, so uh, just last bit. Let's get on to watching those pictures. Well, there it is, all painted up and ready to be shipped out. And hopefully you learned a couple of things when it coming to this video, so this year you can make your own urban terrain basis for your army. Well, if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.